Hey guys, well some of you may have noticed that I have been oddly quiet these days. In fact, I haven't produced a video since October and it is now the end of November. Oddly enough, you know what? Today is my father's birthday. My inspiration, my everything, the one who taught me how to, you know, try out new things and not be scared. So, uh, happy birthday, Dad. But let's get back to why have I been so quiet? Well, let's think of the phrase family first. All right, so October I had a family member who was hospitalized. It happens, you know, as they get upwards in years. And when they came out of the hospital, we came to realize that they needed a little bit more attention and care than what could happen in two different households. So over the last two months, I have been purging my house, staging my house to sell it, to move in with my family member, my entire family to move in with my family member. And well, here I am in my new temporary backyard, complete with the standard neighbor lights. And over here, if you can tell off in the distance, those are some stadium lights from a local recreation park. You know, you just gotta work with the, you know, the hand that you were dealt with sometime. But that's okay. I am now in this house. Hopefully things are gonna settle down for a little bit until I find my next house, which will hold everybody, which would be great because this house, well, I had to give my oldest son to my parents. So he is now living in their basement apartment, which I don't know if he's ever gonna move back in with me because I think he's enjoying that new freedom and well, I miss my son. But also, I miss the Astro Cats. The Astro Cats went to live with him in the basement. So what am I to do? Oh well, so that's my story about what's going on. But more importantly, what is going on in the astronomy world with me? Well, in my last video, I told you I had a sponsor. Land, Sea, and Sky teamed up with Altair Astro and they have given me a telescope kit that is on loan and they wanted me to play with it for a while and and basically give you guys my thoughts my true thoughts my honest thoughts my thoughts okay so we're not going to candy coat anything but what i wanted to show you today is the kit in its entirety as you will receive it and we're going to assemble it so it is perfect for the beginner all the math has been done with for you it's basically everything in one box ready to go just screw some parts together so that's what I wanted to show you guys today is basically what you get in the box and how you assemble it and just how easy it is so I am Amy Astro and welcome to my channel what you get when you purchase this kit, okay? You get an Altair Astro ED6, uh, 60 EDF wide field telescope, which is extremely light. It's got the dual focus on here for fine focusing and coarse focusing. It's really smooth for this category of telescopes, okay? You also get a field flattener so all of your images come out flat and this is the Altair 1X flat 60 which is designed to pair with this telescope okay there are various spacers that you need to acquire your back focus the math has already been done for you so this is what you need perfectly no thinking you just put these pieces together okay and then we have the almighty magnetic filter holder. Now, if you have ever fumbled with filters in the dark, you will come to love this little filter holder, okay? All it is is the end comes out, you pop your filter in there, and it will snap back into place real easy, and it's magnetic, so it won't fall out. 
These you can also purchase separately, which is great. So if you have multiple filters that you like to use, have them pre-threaded into one of these holders and just slide them in and out as you need throughout the night, okay? And the almighty, the Altair Hypercam 183 Pro, it's four gigabytes, and it has a fairly large sensor on it. So the field of view for this thing is going to be fantastic for those larger targets. This has a cooling fan in it, but the one that does not require added power. It will get its power from the USB 3 cable. Now also included with this kit are the necessary cables to get everything running. You get the USB 2 cable to go with your imaging camera. You also get the USB 2 cable and I believe it's called the ST4 cable. Um, I don't necessarily use that one. It's for guiding if you're not using ASCOM, okay? But along with this, you also need a guide scope and you don't want a real heavy guide scope. So they've come up with this really cool little package here and it's small, it's very small. This is not at all what I was expecting to receive. Um, in fact, I've never seen a guide scope this small, but it's a 32 millimeter guide scope. Really cool, it's got the locking nut here for the focusing. So you just thread it out and then lock the nut in place until you acquire your focus. And um, when I got this in focus the other night, it was really quick and easy. I was really impressed with that. Um, what I did is I had this thing lined up on Polaris and I popped over to PHD2 and I let it do its magic. I had it taking pictures. I had big donuts at first and I threaded this out until the donuts became smaller and at one point it was able to start calculating my um, the size of the star. I got it down into the three range which was more than happy for me and, and I was real pleased. The one thing I'm a little confused about is the length of this standoff here. So when I add it to my scope, you can see it's rather tall coming off of here and it creates this odd angle. It almost reminds me of Star Trek and the, you know, the Enterprise spaceship and all that. It seems a little high profile. I would probably prefer a smaller one of these so it would just snug up to the scope itself. But maybe there's a reason and I will play with that after a while and test it out. But I wanna play with this exactly how they intended it to be. And right now, because of its size, the balance is not a huge issue. My mount more than takes care of that. So that's really good. But this is the little guide scope that comes with it. And what attaches onto the end is this little camera. It's their Altair. It's the GP Cam 2, it's 130M USB. It's very small, it's like a film canister size. It has a real small um, chip on here, but it's really fast. It does real well when you're guiding, okay? And also in the box is this uh, Primaluce red dovetail foot, which I will mount on the bottom of this so it will mount into um, my mount holder. And what was really nice about all this was they included the two screws I needed to attach this to the scope, okay? So let's begin putting all this together, okay? And let me show you how quick and easy it was. All I had was my telescope as I received it out of the box. I grabbed the filter, and it's rather obvious, you know, well, clearly this side's not going to mate. So you just put the other side in, and carefully thread it into place. Everything can only go in one direction. So it's basically foolproof, okay? Grab the next one, and you know, you can't have two, two male threads. You've got a male and a female. This is another spacer, and I thread it in, okay? And this is one of the Altair spacers. I really like these because they have these gripping notches on them. So they're easy for me to grab and get on and off. Um, some of them are rather smooth and I have to get jar grips to, to remove them when I need to. So I don't have to worry if I over tighten this, I can pretty much grab it and you know take them off. But there's one, here's the next one. This one's stamped with 15.5 millimeters. It's an M48, that's one of the thread sizes on here. And we can just thread this one on. You see, it's starting to look like a telescope here. And then, 
we've got the filter holder, okay? It can only go on one way. So, I mean, that's the beauty of this. You can't mess it up, really. Everything just hooks in. All right, and then we've got our camera, and our camera will nicely thread into all this. Now, as you do this, I would not be doing this outside like me. I would do it in a climate controlled situation, dust free. And if you do have dust, get you one of those air bulb um, pulse things so you can, you know, spritz some air in there and make sure there's no dust in all this image train. Don't worry, I'm going to take this all apart in a little bit and I'm going to make sure we are dust free. Okay, but that's it. Now, which may have been easier if I had done this first, we've got to put our dovetail foot on here. And we're just going to, if you see there's slots in here, and I've got some screw holes here. There's two ready for me, and I'm gonna line them up. I'm gonna take my screws, and these are the ones that have the, the socket heads on them. And these happen to be 3 16 of an inch. So I've got a 3 16 Allen key, and I can just tighten them in like that. I mean, this is the only tool you have to provide a 3 16 Allen key. So that's, you know, it's pretty slick. All right, the telescope is now assembled. Nice and easy, okay? Now we've got this dovetail bracket that came already on the scope and we're going to add our guide scope to it. And the guide scope, when you receive it, you're going to get the rings in one container and then you're going to get the scope in the other container. And you just loosen up these um, screws and just slide it on in. And you want to do this before you put the camera on, okay? So now that I've got it all slid in, I'm going to take my camera and I'm going to thread it on. All right, and then all we have to do is loosen the screws on this dovetail holder slide this bracket all in and tighten it down and now the first time out what you're going to want to do is aim your telescope at an object in the distance let's say a light pole that's a street or so away from you and I took off the camera side and I just looked right through it now it's not going to be focused but generally if you're aiming at a straight line you're going to notice a straight line going through your image and just line the scope up on that so once you do that you can do the same thing with the guide scope take the camera out look through the end look for that line and adjust these three screws until you can get your guide scope somewhat lined up do you have to have them perfectly lined up absolutely not it does make life just a little bit easier when you're hunting for things, so I do recommend that you try to get close, but don't stress over it at all, okay? So now, as many of you guys may have seen already, my new backyard that I'm in is extremely light polluted. Well, the folks at Altair did not forget that. They included a light pollution filter, and this is their SkyTech 2-inch L Pro Max CCD filter, okay? And all I have to do is I'm going to open up this box. I'm going to show it to you. All right. Let's get it out of the container here. It's got this nice little mirror sheen. And you're probably wondering, well, how do I know which side faces this way and which side faces this way? Well, guesswork is going to be taken out once again for you. You take out your filter holder, okay? It will only thread into this filter holder in one direction. See, it sits right like that. And now I'm going to carefully thread it in so I don't cross thread, thread any of these because cross threading is not cool. So typically to do that, you, you wind it backwards just a touch to get it into the groove and then you twist it to lock in. And of course, I'm doing this at an angle that's not easy for me. All right, let's get it. Let's get it in there. So if this is the hardest part for me, you guys are going to cakewalk right through this. All right. Tap that like it. So now he's threaded in. Now, 
if you find that you've over tightened this and you need to remove it later there's a notch on each side of this filter so it makes it really easy for you to carefully put a small screwdriver or some kind of tool in there and just wiggle it out of its um, threading for you but it fits in just like that and you'll see on the end here there's little magnets that match up with little magnets on the inside of this holder and it will just slide right in and you saw that you just snapped right into place the magnetic filter holder all right there's only one way it can go in one way it can come out and that's it nice and easy only tool I needed was one Allen key and this is the entire assembly in all its glory all right what do you think about that nice and easy now the only thing that I would probably purchase in addition to this I find them on Amazon they're relatively cheap is a batten off mask that would fit the end of the scope it will improve your focusing capabilities trying to focus this on your own is not going to be that easy but you could run it through PhD 2 and choose your imaging camera as the camera to start taking pictures and just let the numbers work for you um, what I like to do is I'll slew over to a very bright star right now that would be like Vega for me and with the Batonov mask you've got those diffraction points and you line them up and it works really easy so this is the setup what are your thoughts and comments on this so far um, are they on the right track with creating a package deal you know it's lightweight it's it's for the newcomers but it's also for those looking for lightweight packages um, there's nothing cheap at all about this package it's well thought out well made um, I'm looking forward to getting some clear skies I might have some clear skies later on this week but naturally they're gonna line up with the full moon but you know it's no brighter than my neighbor's lights over here so maybe we're just gonna give this light pollution filter a, um, a run for its money and see how well it works if it's too much for this backyard which I suspect this backyard is asking a lot from a light pollution filter I will just have to travel a little bit further down the road and set up and, and see what happens all right so that's what I've got for you guys this week don't forget to leave me comments below let me know what you'd like to see in future videos what do you like or dislike about seeing this particular setup I'd be really curious to hear your opinions on it if you like these kind of videos don't forget to like share this video with all of your astro friends don't forget to subscribe we are this close I mean this close to getting 3,000 subscribers I know I said that in the last video but I petered off and didn't produce any videos so that's my fault okay but I sure could use y'all's help with uh, accomplishing this goal. It'll only be a few days late, but that's okay, you know. Goals are good. We've got to have goals. So, I'm Amy Astro. I appreciate you all watching this video. And until the next video, I wish you all some great health, some clear skies, and I will see you all in the next video. I love all y'all. Goodbye.